So Alex, high reliability organisations, we're hearing a lot about it at the moment, but we're not hearing much about leadership. What is the relationship between leadership and becoming a highly reliable organisation? Well, you can't have one without the other is the, is the short answer to that question. If you want to have a highly reliable organisation, you have to make it happen. It's not going to happen by itself. It's certainly not going to jump off the page or off any checklist. People have to explain what it means to people. They have to persuade them that this is something worth doing. And then those people have to internalize it as something that they're going to you know, try to achieve in the context of just doing their day-to-day -day work. So it's absolutely fundamental. In fact, the evidence is that without leadership, you never get high reliability. It's as simple as that. You've said in the past that leaders are critical to organisations becoming more highly reliable. And I suppose leaders are always in the frame in the mining industry. You know, if, there's, if something goes wrong, it's leadership. What can we give leaders? What, could, what advice can you give them about what they can do in practical terms to make their organisations more reliable? I think the critical point, I mean, often I think the conversation around leadership like starts off in the wrong place and it ends up in the wrong place. We, when we talk about leadership in pretty much any industry, we focus on the individual leader and it's all about you. What are you doing? Actually, you need to plan out and understand that leadership is always a group process. So it's not about me and I, the leader, it's about us and we. So the first thing as a leader, I think, is to say, is to, is to like get off your high horse and, and like get out there and find out something about your group. Because if they're not on board and you don't understand them, nothing that you want to happen is going to happen. So the absolute critical thing here, and this comes out in really all the work around high reliability, is that effective leadership is about building that sense of shared purpose, shared endeavor, shared goals. And that's the critical thing to be doing. And actually, just looking in the mirror and saying, ooh, aren't I, aren't I doing a good job here? That isn't really going to cut it. So you're talking about a shared sense of identity between, yep. what, between the leaders and the teams? Yeah, or? yeah between, between the, within the group that's mm -hmm. got to be delivering on the outcome, whatever it is. And that's again, is true for in all domains, in, whether you're talking about sport or business or politics or whatever. No, we need to be a united, integrated, cohesive team that is moving meaningfully towards the goals that we've identified as important. In this case, high reliability. I mean, I hear you, Alex, but help me out here. If I'm a new manager and I've come into a new role and I've got a team I don't know, how do I create that shared sense of identity you're talking about? It's a, that's a really, really good question. And, and actually, the thing I would say is, 10 years ago, I would have said, well, work it out for yourself kind of thing, um, because <laughs> it's, it's complicated. But yeah, I, and, but actually, as we went and we did more and more work in this space, that was really the question that people would ask. And so for the last uh, decade or so, uh, you know, as, as a team of researchers at UQ, we've been really focused on answering that question. And the answer is, it requires a lot of application and effort and, and often a lot of support. So we argue you have to kind of go through a process of being helped to understand why this kind of we thing is important and then you be then be helped to understand like who we are then you have to kind of bring people into that conversation in a meaningful way and then you have to embed the goals that you as an organization have in your practices so that you live out if you like the the business of being a highly reliable organization but that's a lot easier said than done so it's not again it's not just going to happen and it requires really focused intervention actually is 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 the a key message from our work and again that's what we've been spending the you know, last decade or so really focusing on so you've said yourself and Yolanda Yetton have said there's a two-stage model uh, that leaders can use to get towards more reliability in their organizations. Can you just take me through that a little? Okay, so the, the basic, it's, it's kind of building on the conversation that we're having here, mm -hmm. but the, 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 in very simple terms, the, the first step is you have to create this sense of shared identity and shared purpose. You have to build that, and that's a key leadership task. And, and, and really, a lot of our work focuses on that process along the lines of what we've been talking about. And then the second part of that process is, okay, now that we, we are all on the same page, what does it say on the page? What are the things that we want to do and how are we going to do it? And there's a lot of stuff there about making sure that what you want to be and what you want to do aligns with what you're actually doing. So there's a lot of focus on kind of gaps, but also really honest communication within your organization about what's actually happening uh, because I think all too often in the leadership space people are just saying to the leader oh yeah fine yeah we're doing all those things and they and they don't 
care less about them. So you've actually got, and that's, of course, potentially cataclysmic, where people are saying, yeah, of course, yeah, we really care about safety, and we really care about delivering in these things in reliable kind of ways, and actually then, then they just go off and have a smoke. So are you saying you run the risk that the, the workforce, your employees, will be more focused on your checklist than they are on deeply engaging in terms of being focused on that shared sense of identity, that shared commitment to high Yeah, I mean, I, that's, I, I really think that's, that's, that's absolutely the risk. I think there's a place for understanding what you're trying to achieve, okay? But again, and like, so if I want to be a great football team, well, maybe I do need to learn some kind of dribbling skills and I know, need to know how to take a penalty, you know, you know, and so on. Okay, but if you just think, if you just boil it down to all of those ingredients and say that's what you need to do, actually, it's very unlikely you'll be a great team because actually those things have to be galvanised in a meaningful way, and they have to be internalised, and we have to work out how we are going to deliver on those things and what it's going to mean to be us, the great team. And every great team in, is, is interestingly is is very different. So there isn't just one route to high reliability and do that. No, actually. There are lots and lots of different ways of being highly reliable, in part because the leadership in the group process has to always be sensitive to the context in which you're working. So we've done a lot of stuff. We've done stuff with the RAF. We've done stuff with Air Service Australia. We've done stuff with the Houses of Parliament. High reliability in each of those spaces looks very, very different because the culture, the teams, the expectations, the history, they look different. And you can't just you know, transport or transplant one kind of model of high reliability over here into any other organization expect it will work again often because there'll be there's like a blood brain barrier if you like between the one culture and the other so what works in mining isn't going to be what works in in the military or in business or in um you know in uh, medicine in very very simple terms you have to understand high reliability from a leadership perspective is like painting a masterpiece. It's not a, an exercise in paint by numbers. It's really not a case, oh, well, here's a thing, and that's the number five, so let's plonk a bit of stuff in there. Yeah. No, actually, what is, the, what is the thing that we are trying to do here? And, it, and of course, every masterpiece is, is unique. They're not like, you know, but it is, but it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a very context sensitive production that picks up all the stuff that feeds into what we are about and what we want to be. And again, that's one of the, the key lessons of, of Wycombe Sutcliffe's work. When the high reliability organizations that they studied, each of them had a, had a very distinct footprint, had a very distinct way of being, and they were all special in their own way that was true to what they, the people in those groups were trying to achieve. Every, you know, take a research team. Every great research team looks different to other research teams because, of course, they're trying to achieve different things in different ways with different, you know, raw materials. So we're asking people to think deeply and engage deeply as leaders, but we're not saying, we're not, we're not just throwing them to the wolves and saying, oh, it's all, it's all context specific, you sort it out. There yeah, are yeah, ways yeah. to go about yeah. moving through this process of becoming more reliable. Absolutely, absolutely. And uh, yeah, and, and in the process of doing that, yeah, there are w good and, 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 and less good and, and, and actually fundamentally bad ways of setting about that. But again, actually the, the key thing, and this is, the, the key word in the, in the, that you talked about earlier is, is about sensitivity. So it is about sensitivity to what we are about. And, and, and anything which is insensitive and is, again, a sort of one-size-fits-all, off-the-peg kind of solution is problematic. So again, the work that we've done is about working with leaders and organizations more generally to do that really hard work mm -hmm. of actually you know, taking people through that process on that journey together. And there's a lot of foregrounding and, uh, uh, to be done there, but also, you know, a, a long uh, trajectory of like, of like internalizing those things and then enacting them. It's not, and it isn't, you know, you aren't going to become a high reliability organization overnight, uh, but the bad news is you can become a low reliability organization overnight if you're not careful. So Alex, what you're saying is you can't achieve high reliability without leaders who are really engaged with their followers and you won't get that deep engagement without that shared sense of social identity. Absolutely. That really is the key message here. Thank you. Great. I've enjoyed it. <laughs>